Okay, let's talk about cross rates now. If you're trading a currency that's not the US dollar for another currency that's not the US dollar, as I mentioned, the US dollar is on one side of the majority of foreign exchange transactions. I if I remember right, it's about 60 plus percent. But there's still a significant amount of transactions that don't involve dollars at all. Those are going to be called currency against currency, and they're going to involve what's called cross rates, calculating cross rates. So, example in the book that will follow says a customer wants to trade out of British pounds and into euros. What's going to happen is instead of trading pounds for euros directly, the bank's going to sell pounds for dollars and then sell dollars for euros. And that's going to be done at the cross rate desk. Now you might be wondering, why don't they just have a desk set up to trade pounds for euros? And pounds and euros are both pretty important, so they might. But if you take some of the smaller economies and the, the less significant currencies, it's just going to be a matter of logistics as to why we don't have a cross market for every country. So for example, if you had Mexican pesos and you needed Canadian dollars, there's probably not a peso Canadian dollar market. You're going to go pesos to US dollars and then US dollars to Canadian dollars. Right? If you have Russian rubles and you need to go to Australian dollars, you're not going to go straight here. You're going to go US dollar and then back to Australian dollars. Now, why is that? Well, if there was a cross market between every currency, and I'm not even listing all the currencies here. I just have this table from the book, which lists 45 currencies. Now, there's also the US dollar there, so we have a total of 46 currencies here. If we talked about the number of trading relationships and markets that would have to exist, well, that's going to be a combination formula, basic combination formula. So the number of items and the number in each set. So we have a total of 46 items and we have sets of two. So we're gonna work out the combination mathematics here and that's going to look like this. There have to be 1,035 separate trading desks to handle each cross transaction. Now a lot of those cross transactions, there might not even be transactions in a particular day. You know, how many people have Lebanese pounds and need to go into South Korean won, for example. So it's going to make a lot more sense just to have 45 markets set up and 45 traders. You know, most banks will have one trader specializing in each of the major currencies versus the dollars. So instead of having a thousand desks and a thousand traders, they only need, you know, 45 in, in this example. So it works out to be more efficient. Okay, let's look at how this cross rate transaction would work. And we're back to this example of a customer who wants to go from British pounds into euros. Okay, and just to make things simple, we'll say the customer has 1 million pounds. They want to take those into euros. Okay, I just realized there's a typo in the book. So what's going to happen is the bank's going to sell British pounds, sell the million British pounds for dollars, going to buy dollars, at $1.31 per pound. So if you work that out, a million pounds times $1.3153 per pound, you come up with $1.3153 million. Okay. Then the bank's going to take and sell those dollars, convert them into euros, at the euro rate of $1 equals 0.89 euros. So you take the $1.3153 million times the 0.89 euros per dollar, you wind up with 1.171 million euros. At the end of that multi-step transaction, we see that the customer effectively sold British pounds at a euro to pound price of 1.17 euros per pound. Because we started with a million pounds, we wound up with 1.17 million euros. So what that looks like is million pounds per 1.171 million euros. And if we flip that over, unitize it to one pound, we'll see it's 1.171 euro per pound, okay? And then example B here, which you can pause and look at if you'd like, it just goes the other way around. You're going from euros to pounds. So you go from euros to dollars at this exchange rate. Then you go from dollars back to pounds at this exchange rate. And you see that you got essentially the same cross rate at the end, slightly different, probably due to uh, rounding. Okay, so cross rates, a little bit more complicated, you're going from one currency to another to another. So we'll think a little bit more about this issue of cross rate. Exchange rates are reciprocals. Talked about this already, but let's go into it in a little more detail. So if the euro US dollar rate is $1.2046 per euro, that means the US dollar euro rate is the reciprocal. Flip that around. So this is 1.2, let's just round that to $1.2 
per one euro and I like to think about this as a fraction okay unit a unitized ratio in other words 1.2 dollars and the fraction bar read that as per one euro so flip that around one euro divided by 1.20 dollars and when you work that math out you get this 0 0.8302 and that would be a unitized rate the denominator is now one one US dollar 0.83 euros per dollar okay so you can do that math or you can look at what's called the cross rates table so I, once again I went to Bloomberg I got the cross rates it should be good as of February 5th 2021 once again and notice now that we've got uh, the major currencies stacked both vertically and horizontally. So I can go from dollars to euros. So this would be the euro in terms of US dollars. US dollars per euro, 1.2046 dollars per euro. Or I can go from euro to dollar, 0.8302 euro per US dollar. Japanese yen, remember we said the, the yen is not worth very much. It's worth less than one cent, one U.S. cent per Japanese yen. And that means the dollar is worth 105 Japanese yen. The Great Britain pound, let's look at the pound. So let's look at it in terms of dollars. That's right here. It's currently worth 1.37, dollar 37. Okay, one divided by a dollar 37 would give us the price of the dollar in terms of pounds. That's right here in our cross table, 70.73 pounds, I think they still call them pence even though they decimalized it, is the pound price of one dollar. Now one more point I'd like to address regarding cross rates. We could use an exchange rate table to work out any cross rate by doing some simple ratio conversion. So we want to find an unlisted cross rate. So for example the table we first looked at, the Bloomberg data, had some of the major exchange rates but all of them are either against the dollar or against the euro. So we don't have any exchange rates that are non-dollar or non-euro. So I got to thinking, well, what if we wanted to know, for example, the value of the Canadian dollar in terms of Swiss francs? Okay, We don't know that. We do know the US dollar in terms of Canadian dollars, and we know the Swiss franc in terms of US dollars. So we can use both of these known exchange rates to work out the implied cross rate between the Canadian dollar and the Swiss franc. Here's what that's going to look like. So I've got US dollar in terms of Canadian dollar. I'm going to write this as a ratio. One US dollar is worth 1.2756 Canadian dollar. And right here, US dollar in terms of Swiss francs, one US dollar is Swiss francs 0 0.8990. Okay. Now, we can convert by flipping some ratios and canceling the US dollars out. So here's what that's going to look like. So I'm going to have one dollar to 1.2756. I'll just put Canada like that. And then I'm going to invert the one dollar to Swiss francs one because you'll see how what how this works out. I want the US dollars part to cancel out. So I'll put 0 0.8990 CHF here per one dollar. So I'm just using these ratios, and then I'm canceling out the dollars. So to get Swiss francs per one Canadian dollar, that's going to look like this, 0 0.8990 zero, divided by 1.2756, so 0.7 Swiss francs per Canadian dollar, so that would be the Swiss francs to Canadian dollar, and then of course we could take the reciprocal of that, so 1 divided by 0 0.7048, which gives us 1.4188. 
and that would be the Canadian dollar to Swiss franc. So we can work out implied cross rates by finding two pairs of known rates against a what we might call like a common denominator currency and then doing this math accordingly. Now let's check that out make sure we did the math right versus a cross rate table because we do have this. So the Swiss franc in terms of Canadian dollars 0 0.7048 check and the Canadian dollar in terms of Swiss francs 1.4189 1.4088. I think I have maybe just a little bit of a rounding error there, but that's pretty darn close. So we could work out those cross rates through a common denominator and a ratio conversion process if we don't have the cross rates. But most of the time, especially for major currencies, you can go straight to the cross rate table. So you want to be able to uh, understand how the cross rates tables work. If you realize that every price is just a reciprocal going one way, and then the other price is the reciprocal of that and that'll get your head around the whole cross rates situation.